My name is Ben and I have two daughters, Lila and Esme. And I remember pretty vividly the day we brought our first child, Lila, home from the hospital. I looked at my wife, Holly, and I said, that was great, at least for me. What do we do with her now? Like, it seemed insane to me that the doctors and nurses would allow Holly and I, us, to be in charge of this person, this human's life, like indefinitely. I think the best word to describe my first impression of parenting would be overwhelming, for sure. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with love, overwhelmed with responsibility, overwhelmed with exhaustion, overwhelmed with Google searches, how to swaddle, that was my first Google search. Then I moved on to other things like how to put a baby in a doorway jumper without regretting it forever. Maybe that was just me. By the way, doorway jumpers, terrible idea. Look, parenting, it's overwhelming. I mean, some of us deal with that in different ways. We read books, we ask for the advice of a professional, we reach out to friends or family members who are a little bit down the road from us. We call our moms and say, Mom, how did you keep us alive? We read online forums, not a good idea, by the way. Don't, just don't read those. At one point, I got so desperate that I got on Pinterest. Yes, me, a male husband got on Pinterest for parenting help. Look, there is plenty of advice out there. But then, like even that can be overwhelming, right? I mean, the sheer volume of ideas and theories and guidelines, it's enough to make you wanna quit before you even start. I've been there. I mean, every parent has probably been there. But today I wanna to give you one thing to focus on, just one thing to think about when it comes to raising your children. I know there's a lot that you could, but I'm just gonna give you one thing. If you can get this concept, we think it will narrow the scope of your focus. And maybe over time, it'll ease some of the overwhelming feelings that you, me, we all deal with. In Deuteronomy 6, chapter 6, verses 5 through 7, Moses gives some parenting advice. And here's what he said. He said simply, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Then he says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. That's simple. Moses doesn't begin a debate on whether or not you should let your child cry it out or not. He doesn't say this one command I give you, baby sign language. He doesn't talk about how much television kids should watch. No, Moses says, look, he tells the people the most important thing they can pass along to their child is a love and knowledge of their heavenly father. And so we think, oh, that's so obvious. Of course I'm gonna pass that on, but it's easy, isn't it, to get caught up in all the day-to-day -day tasks involved with parenting, and it's so easy to lose sight of this simple truth. Outside of them, knowing they are loved, nothing is more important than your child's faith. Nothing is more important than living a life that shows your child that their Heavenly Father created them and loves them and desperately wants a relationship with them. So instead of asking yourself, what do you want your child to do? What if you asked yourself, who do I want my child to be? There was a season uh, of my life when I used to go running with my brother-in-law, Tim. Now, to Tim, running is easy and fun, okay? He's one of those people. To me, running is terrible and hard. I'm one of those people, okay? He's one of those guys who can carry on effortless conversations while he runs. I hate people like that. I'm gasping for air. I'm grunting. I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm crying. But one day, while I was doing what I did best, which was complaining to Tim that I couldn't go any farther, he said, look, why don't you just look up and find a landmark way off in the distance? Just focus on making it there. And so that's what I did. Now, focusing on that spot, it didn't put any more oxygen in my lungs. Didn't make me any happier about running, but it, it did help me push through because I kept the destination in focus. And that's what we want you to do with parenting. We wanna help you choose a spot in the horizon to focus on. And so at the end of this video, here's what we'd love. We'd love for you to sit down and write a description of the type of person you'd like your child to grow up to be. 
Do you want your child to be forgiving? Do you want your child to be generous? A good friend, a hard worker, compassionate, determined, loyal? We want you to choose three to five words. Now, you're gonna share these during the baby dedication event, so we want you to make sure that you write them down, write them out. Now, I realize, and I would probably be like this, some of you are gonna look at this list and start getting overwhelmed all over again. You're thinking, whoa, wait a minute. I, I'm just trying to get my daughter to sleep longer than three hours a night. I'm trying to get my son to eat something other than marshmallows for dinner. And you want me to focus on teaching them how to be compassionate? <laughs> That's not what this list is. This list, it's your ultimate destination. Let, let your periphery take care of the little things, but let this list navigate the big moments and the big decisions. Because look, right now, right now is important. And the, and the crazy, overwhelming moments along the way are important. But while you are surviving those, we want you to keep a bigger picture in your mind. And here's what we want it to be. The person that your amazing son or daughter can become. Focus on that.